mm, okay, yeah, it's improved, yeah, it's better. Nah. nah. Like, it's better. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit better. Does not justify 700. What's, what justifies 700 is, wow, damn, woo. That's what justifies it. So I think, look, you have to be having a laugh. Like, Sony, you're having a laugh. It's as simple as, like, I'm sorry, like, you have to be joking. 700 pounds. $700. So if you do the exchange rates, people in Europe, or rather, people in the you know sorry, so people in the UK are paying like about nine hundred dollars for this because you're thinking okay, so that's seven hundred dollars. Then surely it should be less for UK folks. But no, it's the same price, which means that if you do the equivalent, it's nine hundred dollars for UK dudes. You see, the th the thing here is this: is that. We are still living in a cost of living crisis. That's all that's happening. That's one thing. To justify that price, you have to do something truly significant to justify that price. Because you know what? This reminds me of when they released the price for the PS3. And that is how 361. Like PS3 may have had more or sold more units. But that was what allowed Microsoft just to encroach into this console gaming sphere and really hold their own and make it a competition because of that, the crazy price that the PS3 had, 360 now undercut them and bro, everyone got a 360. Everyone got a 360 and that is still to this day one of the best performing and most revered consoles and Microsoft's greatest ever gaming console, something they will never ever achieve again. But Sky 700 is a ridiculous price. That is an absolutely disgusting price for a console. That it's 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 ridiculous. Because I watch and guys, I've seen videos and the graphical leap doesn't justify it. Oh, 4K60 doesn't justify it. For that price, I need a much greater graphical leap included with 4K60. Yeah, 4K60 is, is cool, but the graphics have got to be substantially better. And from the comparisons I saw, I didn't go wow. You see, for me, for you to even begin to justify 700, which I still think is crazy, but to even get into the convo of trying to justify 700, if I see a graphical comparison, I have to say wow. I have to be like, whoa, wow, damn. If I don't go wow, and I'm like, Okay, yeah, it's improved, yeah, it's better. Nah. nah. Like, it's better. Oh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a bit better. Does not justify $700. What's, what justifies $700 is, wow, damn, woo. That's what justifies it. I mean, it's, it's I just, it's, because the reason why I wanted to do this video is obviously not just beyond this. It's something that I've been thinking about, which is, obviously, PC gaming is one thing, but... Have we reached a graphical ceiling in all these consoles? Because I've just been thinking about the PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5, PS, yeah, PS5, um, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Series X. And I'm saying to myself that there was a time when there was a graphical, a massive graphical leap where it's justified that price hike. Then there's now been a moment where, okay, some cooler additions, but because here's the thing. The most important thing about games is gameplay. What is the number one game of all time? The number one selling game of all time is Minecraft. Minecraft has freaking brick graphics. So gameplay is paramount, whether that be a Minecraft or that be a Tetris or that be a football manager. But if you're trying to offer a huge price for a technological machine, beyond just the gameplay, 
the additional things that you can do within the internet, graphically, it's got to be on a whole other level. I mean, right now, I'm saying that the next thing has to be VR. The next thing has to be virtual reality where we are actually in the game like Ready Player One. Because graphically, I just don't see these crazy prices just justifying this stuff. I, I don't. I don't. Um, because I think to myself, trying to look at the, 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 the graphical leaps, in my view, because so, obviously I want to just focus this, this on, on PlayStation. PS1 to PS2 was a huge leap. That was a massive leap. PS2, PS3 was a leap, but not as large as PS1 to PS2. Because I think, because and, and that's the difference there. There was there was an improvement from PS2 to PS3, 100%. But PS1 to PS2 was, whoa, wow. PS2 to PS3 was, oh, woo, improvement. So the graphical improvement was much larger. And when you go from PS3 to PS4, it was an improvement, not huge. Guys, I'm keeping it a stack. And you see, this is subjective. I can only go via how I view it through my eyes. I don't think there's a massive leap between PS3, between PS4 and PS5. I don't think there is. Because playing Uncharted 2 on PS3 and then Uncharted 4 on PS4, there was not that big. Yes, you saw a difference. It was not vast. It wasn't vast. And I'm looking and I'm playing this PS5 games and I'm like, I don't see a massive graphical leap. I'm playing Astrobot now. And the thing about Astrobots isn't the graphics. It's just the incredible gameplay. Like what they've um, what they've done with the pad. Guys, what Astrobot is doing with this pad is insane. Is absolutely insane. So that is what is making Astrobot so amazing and why. I'm like, it's one of the best games I've ever played. Just based on just the gameplay experience. And I'm like, you know what? This is next gen. So it may not be next gen graphically, but it is next gen in terms of the gameplay experience using the pad. So again, if you're going to justify a price hike, what is that next gen thing you're doing? Is it the gameplay? Is it a particular generational next gen feature? Or is it a total next-gen graphics? It's going to be something. Because, you see, so this, this, was M, this was MGS1 to MGS2. So MGS1 came out on PS1, MGS2 came out on PS2. And I remember watching that trailer of MGS2 and I was like, this is a whole other level. And it was a big deal. It was a massive deal. I remember, I remember, so in my age, I remember buying the official PlayStation magazine and looking at pictures of GTA 4, no, um, GTA 3 before it came out on PlayStation. This is when magazines were a thing. And I was like, bro, this, 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 this looks crazy. I was like, this looks crazy. So, 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 yeah, so that's, so that price, because I forgot what the price of the PS2 was. So that price that came in with the PS2, it's justified because it was like, this is next gen. So in terms of what you can do feature-wise, because remember, that was the first time you, you got to dual send. Was it dual send? But I think joysticks. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was the first time you got joystick pads on it. Um, was it? I think you could play DVDs. Basically, uh, yes, yes, you could play DVDs. Blu-rays was PS3, was Blu-rays. Being able to play DVDs and it's being a DS. You could play games and you could also also a DVD player. So we're getting like a gaming machine and a DVD player in one plus huge upscale, I mean, no, huge improvement in graphics. That was a selling point of the PS2. Because remember, the PS1 was just purely a gaming machine, which was extremely faulty, always broke down. PS2, none of that. So... That it's made sense because it's it's you truly felt this is a massive leap from PS1 to PS2. Um so remember this was so, so yeah, so this was GTA 3 on PS2, and I, I'm playing it now on the Switch. And you could tell that, okay, look, it was great for its time, but yeah, okay, that's what it was what it is. You know, and then obviously this is GTA 4 on PS3. So there was 
I told you there was a there was a jump. I just don't feel the jump was that big between PS2 and PS3. It was an improvement. It was definitely an an improvement. But which is why I said to, to you that like the I remember that feeling. I'm not sure you guys remember that feeling of playing those first two PS2 games. And you're like, bro, this is on a whole other level because it was such a huge leap from the PS1. That leap wasn't the same from PS2 to PS3, even though it was big. PS3, PS4, guys, I, to- guys, I told you, like, how different was Uncharted 2 to Uncharted 4? Really? On a graphical tip, gameplay tip. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing the difference between PS4 and PS5. I, j- I just don't. I, j- I simply don't. Because... I'm playing the PS5 right now, and I'm like, okay, look, I'm playing Alan Wake 2 now. Played Baldur's Gate 3. I'm doing my second playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm like, okay, this is cool, but this ain't a massive leap from PS4. And I now um, I'm replaying um, Red Dead Redemption 2 on the PS5. So obviously, upscaling PS4 graphics. And I'm like, bro, this game, <laughs> this game still looks bloody good. And this is on a previous generation. And this game does not look that much inferior to these current PS5 games. So it leads me to believe, and this is what guys have been saying to me. One of my good friends, he's done this, and many people have been advising me, get a PC. You see, my thing is this, is that I've never been a PC gamer. You know, like I told you, I'm not really a gamer. I just play video games. So I don't, I don't call myself a gamer. I just play video games and I just like playing video games. So, and I've always been mainly a console gamer because I just like the idea of just holding a pad. Like this whole day, you're on the couch, you're holding the pad like, like this. So it's very, I know you can get a pad with a PSC, but there's just, maybe I'm just a traditionalist. There's just, because I have so much of a history of SNES, Mega Drive, um, PlayStation, guys, there was a console we had called 3DO. Guys, we've, guys, my family, we 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 gamed. We had a console called the 3DO. My older brother got the Dreamcast. He literally got the Dreamcast to play Shenmue. After he finished Shenmue, he sold that. <laughs> you know, but if you, I don't know how many of you played the 3DO, if you played, that was a amazing machine. I think. There was a game on it called Actual Soccer, I think, which was freaking amazing for its for, for its time. So I've always just liked the whole part thing. And guys, guys this, this place is about is this this is the best part I've ever had. Easily, easily the best game part I've ever had is this game part. But um, is this economically the best way to to go? It's expensive, but you go crazy with the graphics card. Get a super high graphics card, and you're future proofed. And you all you need to do is just update the graphics card. So you build a PC, you shell out the huge amount of money just to build the body and everything. Then you're just increasing the, the graphics card. And what people have told me is whatever graphics you see on the consoles, PC is better. I, I was shocked. I thought, oh no, no, the best graphics are on like the PlayStation or the latest Xbox. But I said, no, the best graphics you're gonna get is on the PC. If you, you have the money and you get the high tier graphics card, high tier PC, it will have the best graphics and it will have the best performance on any console. I was shocked. I said, like, what? I've been lied to. So, because my thing is, I'm, have you reached a graphical ceiling? Because I'm saying to myself that the way I was wowed, for instance, remember when you first played at the N64? And you watched Ocarina of Time and everything was in 3D. It was like, whoa, to go from um, a link to the past on the SNES to Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mark on N64, that was a big deal. Going from um, the um, GTA 2 top down thing to GTA 3 on that PS2, that was a freaking big deal. You know? That, like, so that was a massive deal. That was a massive deal. So, I, I, because I just, it, because looking at this, and this is what everyone is saying is, bro, just, just, just build. If you're going to do this, build a PC. Because 
for nine hundred dollars, close to a thou, you can get a, a damn good quality PC. So now, people have said that how much support do they have for the PC? They support the consoles a lot more. Economically, this doesn't make sense. Economically, this doesn't make sense. I mean, you it's, remember you already paid a certain price for that PlayStation. Now, obviously, if you now trade it in, maybe it can work out to be a bit cheaper, which is what most people will do. They'll just trade in their PS5. But I'm like, so you're charging 700 for 4K60, better performance, and slightly, and I'm sorry, guys, slightly better graphics. I saw side-by-side -side videos, and I'm sorry, those, because people can say, oh, no, you have to play to see it. Bro, when they showed that trailer for MGS2, I remember I was like, my God, what? This is insane. I was like, this is this is this is absolutely insane. Or when you saw um, the difference between Halo on the Xbox and Halo Two, Halo Three on the on the three sixty, I was like, okay, well, bro, like that. So there's not enough of a wow factor of like, damn. Which is why everybody looking at that is insane. Like there is no chance in hell. I'm getting this. I'm I'm happy with my PS5 here. I'm I'm I'm, I'm because my thing is I'm getting this because slightly better graphics, 4K 60, and what's more storage, and that justifies 700. You're insane. Like you're smoking crack. You're smoking crack. I mean, nah. Like, but uh, so that's my question to you guys. I don't know whether you got what you guys think. Have we reached a graphical ceiling? As in, what will the, will the PS6 or the next Xbox really be a... Ma I'm waiting for that massive leap in graphics. The massive leap in there. Whoa, this is a whole new generation. Because PS4 to PS5, I don't think it's that big. And I'm sorry, PS5 to PS5 Pro? Nah, bro. That That is it is not a big enough gap. or, or a, It's not a big enough upgrade. It's not a big enough improvement to justify 700. That's insane. Absolutely insane.